All right, now, top of the morning to you and a fine rest of the day to you. Casper Rose and Kroll, day uh, four of the push-up challenge. I just had a good, uh, good chest and shoulder drive with my neighbor and his two sons. Puts the neighbor in neighborhood. I look forward to that. I enjoy that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, knock out some push-ups for the uh, Wounded Warrior Challenge. Uh, the 1776 push-up challenge and uh, shout out to all my old homies and bros that uh, that used to work out with me on the inside that are now out uh, and uh, you know uh, you guys know who you are you see you're staying fit I like that stay fit stay stay solid and uh, let's do this Okay, that's 25, 25 to start things with today. You know, uh, one of the things I hate about this is uh, summer weather is the, uh, the mosquitoes. They just tear up my legs, man. I mean, it's like I'm a magnet for these things. I can put that deep crap all over them and they just get me, you know? They're little blood suckers, little vampires, you know, like uh, like those people that, uh, that you used to call friends. And maybe some of you are still calling them friends. They suck the life out of you. They're like parasites. They're, they come around and say, hey, let's get loaded, let's get drunk, you know, uh, let's party, party. There's a word, party, how about that? You know, party, party uh, invokes the, the thoughts of, of a good time, you know, uh, having a good time with, with uh, friends, family, you know. <clears throat> but uh, a good time is where you get your mind back at the end of it all. Uh, a good time is where you get home safely at the end of it all. <clears throat> Not where you get behind the wheel and uh, possibly hit somebody and kill them, kill yourself. I mean, God forbid you get behind the wheel while you're inebriated and you uh, you survive with injury, without injury, and you kill a, a mom and her little five-year-old son. How do you live with that the rest of your life? Whatever the penalty to your liberty is secondary. How do you live with the rest of your life carrying that demon every day? I know about carrying demons, not those kind, but other demons from uh, from my previous life. But uh, yeah, those those are not pleasant things to carry around. You know, it's like like big old sandbags that you're carrying every day. So you know, <clears throat> when somebody comes over and says, "Hey, buddy, hey, homeboy, hey, brother, hey, friend, let's party, man! I got some of these party favors." You know, be a man, be a woman, stand up, say, "Hey." Ain't my idea of a party anymore, and I hope you ain't driving like that, man. You know, uh, let me let me call you an Uber or a Lyft, or let me give you a ride myself, or whatever it entails. You know, but uh, uh, today's the Fourth of July. It's Independence Day. Happy Independence Day to everybody, especially you veterans. Uh, you know, remember the freedoms we enjoy are because of the veterans of our country that uh, that went and served to uh, you know shore up that constitution for whatever it's worth anymore sometimes i think it's worth you know less than toilet paper because at least toilet paper you can wipe your ass with you know that that old piece of parchment you couldn't wipe your ass with even if you get your hands on it but uh let's not forget the enshrined elements of that constitution you know uh second amendment for law-abiding people that have weapons you know <clears throat> it's not your right to bear arms it's your right not to be infringed upon to bear arms to keep and bear arms uh which doesn't mean it ends at the threshold of your home for home defense. You know, that's that's the key part. To bear means to, to have them on your person uh, when you're out and about, you know. So uh, there's that. There's the First Amendment, you know, the right to your religious beliefs, whatever they may be, whether somebody else likes it or not. And the right to your free speech, you know. There's a lot of stuff uh, that has been canceled out by the cancel culture of wokeism and everything else, you know, uh, the 10th Amendment rights of state sovereignty, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the enumeration uh, doctrine of, of the Constitution, all these things, they've been watered down, you know, uh, you know, search and seizure, things like that. But your First Amendment right, your Second Amendment right, those things still exist. They exist because of the Second Amendment. You know, as long as, it, as, long as the country is armed legally. You know, crooked politicians and, and, and pettifoggers, you know, 
postulates in Washington, D.C., they're not going to be able to do anything about those first two amendments. So if nothing else, celebrate those today. That's what don't tread on me means from the Gadsden flag. Don't tread on me, you know. So, uh, you know, hopefully somewhere down the line, some of these kids that are growing up and tired of what's happening now, they'll be voting age and they'll be able to vote and make a difference in this, run for office themselves, turn this around. Uh, I'm not very optimistic, but, but I'm not entirely pessimistic either. So, you know, I'm just going to, the jury's out on that one. <clears throat> but today's Independence Day. And, uh, you know, it's 7076, you know, to 2024. Let's celebrate that. Celebrate it responsibly and uh, make it home safe for you and those that are around you on the road or wherever you're at. And uh, remember, remember those parasites are not your friends, you know. Uh, you know, be responsible for, your, for yourself. That brings the total to 50. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, uh, this is my second 4th of July out here. Uh, you know, I was out last year and I had just gotten out. First 4th of July I got to spend with my wife and my family. This is my second one. Didn't watch any fireworks or anything like that. I wasn't ready to be around people yet. And, uh, you know, so I hung out with my dogs and my wife inside. But I think tonight, you know, I'm, I'm a good neighbor in this neighborhood now. I'm probably come out and hang out with my neighbors a little bit, you know, and uh, I'm just going to sit here and enjoy what it means to be free and what it means to be civilized and, and law-abiding and, you know, uh, what it means to be an American, you know, uh, as a veteran, as a citizen, you know. I know it sounds so, so wishy-washy to people that used to be in the movement or call themselves, you know, uh, nationalists and whatnot, you know, I mean, uh, I've been a part of that for so long and I saw the, the decent stand-up people disappear and wane while uh, the lunatic fringe took its place. And, uh, you know, they just cause people that are generally patriotic a whole bunch of grief and trouble. So, <clears throat> so I walk alone now with the people that I caught into and the caught into me, you know, people that love their their constitutional rights and uh, defend them. You know, these rights given by God and gods, depending on your religious perspective, that no man can take away from you. They cannot wrest them from you. It's like respect. It's like your self-respect, your dignity. Nobody can wrest that from you, no matter what they do to you. Only you can forfeit that. Only you can forfeit that with your rights as well, your liberties. Uh, so, uh, you know, Speaking of self-respect and dignity, I'd just like to touch on something for those of you who may think you have it in stores and really don't understand except for the saying, hey, I'm, I've got plenty of self-esteem and self-respect. Self-respect means you can't respect somebody or something that doesn't respect you and respect yourself at the same time. The two are incompatible. For you to respect yourself, you can only acknowledge those that are respecting you or what you're doing. They don't have to agree with it, they don't have to like it, but they have to afford you that deference. If they're not affording you that deference, you cannot respect them and respect yourself at the same time. Now, don't confuse and get twisted. There's, there's common consideration, basic consideration when you're out in the general public. But what you do in your home or in your circle of friends and associations where you assemble, there should always be a mutual, uh, consensual respect. And, uh, you know, there should be some, uh, some pride, some dignity, some esteem that uh, is going all the way around. Uh, if it's not, you're hanging out with the wrong people. Another set. Say right now, brothers and sisters, this right here, this is self-respect. Okay, that's seventy-five. So uh, there's a lot of a lot of men out there, and maybe some of you are watching. They bat around their wife and their children, or their their girl and their children. And if you're beating your old lady and your kids, you're not the man you think you are at all. 
and you got a real problem, real issues with that, that uh, you can take control over, you can take command of, and you can rid yourself of those maladies, and you can become a man, the man you're intended to be, uh, the defender and protector of your loved ones, your kids and your old lady, not the abuser, not the tyrant, not the terror of. So, you know, there's no excuse for woman abuse, there's no excuse for child abuse, you know. Unless a dame's coming at you with a weapon in her hand and your life hangs in a balance or your family's, you should never fucking strike a woman. Uh, and you should never beat children. And I'm not saying spare the rod, all that crap and shit like that. I'm just saying uh, you should never beat children. There's, there's such a thing as a difference, a big, big fat line between discipline and, and beating. So, you know, uh, and, and you women out there, you women that, that stay in relationships like that, you've got to find your self-esteem. You gotta find your self-respect, you know? You're, you're, you're hurting yourself, you're hurting your children if you got them. Uh, you're, you're breaking the hearts of your loved ones. Every time you show up with a black guy or bruises, have to make excuses for him or to your family or it was your fault, oh, I, I did this first. And it's never your fault. It's never your fault. Guys, walk away. Women, walk away. You know, rethink things if you need help. There's all kinds of places out there to get that help. You know, uh, I've always thought along these lines, and then, you know, it's what I did my last term for, as a matter of fact. I did, I did a previous term for that, too, in 1990. Uh, for, uh, I'm not Captain Save-A-Ho or Captain Save the Day, but, I mean, you know, I just, I just don't tolerate that kind of stuff in my presence. But at the same time, you know, uh, I've seen women who just got the shit beat out of them by their old man at a party or something like that when I was younger, as soon as a guy tries to step in and help them or stop that, they jump on the guy who's trying to help them. You know? Uh, this is a mindset that's, that's, that's askewed. It's a perception that's askewed. You need to get rid of that thinking and adopt some healthy self-esteem. You know? Uh, you need to say, hey, I'm not a punching bag. I don't deserve this. I deserve better. I deserve a good man, or, or, or at least self-love, love of myself, not to put up with this shit. That's what self-respect is, ladies. You know, that's what, that's what esteem is. And there's a dignity in that that, uh, that allows you to hold your, your chins up high, you know? To say, hey, I'm in command of my life and, and my kid's life, and I'm not gonna put up with this anymore. There are shelters out there. Uh, you don't have to do this, and if, if, if it really truly is love, is why you put up with this. You can go to the shelter, and uh, when, when things are ready through counselors and, and mediators, and get a hold of him when he's calmed down, if he really wants to do this and he really loves you, and you can get some counseling together, and maybe build a, a healthy relationship, and put a family back together healthy, you know, as opposed to, uh, you know, this abuse, the cycle of abuse, which goes on and on and on and on. So, uh, and then he gets passed down to, to, to kids, you know, you know, sons and stuff. So, uh, so my dad did this, it was good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Well, it's not good enough for anybody. It's not good enough for anybody. Say, oh, I'm old school. I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm old school, motherfuckers. And my dad never raised his hand to my mom. He was an Avery Frogman, you know? He never raised his hand to my mom or any of his kids, you know? Uh, I've raised my hand to women twice in my life, and it's only because they had weapons. When they, they came after me with weapons, you know, I had nowhere to go. I had to stop, stop. If I could have just left, I would have been. I was a place where, where there was no exit, no way to get around it, and uh, you know, uh, I only did what I had to do to to, to, to defuse the situation, and, and and then I just moved on from that. I, I didn't sit there and beat on them or just you know keep doing. It. I just you know, uh, so you know, I'm not proud of that. But uh, but you know, I'm, you can't you can't be a victim of somebody's violence, no matter who they are. You know, uh, anybody who thinks that that's wrong. Um, I'll tell you what, there's all kinds of people that didn't make it home, or on, on this day, the 4th of July, we think about our veterans, there's all kinds of veterans who did come home without limbs because a little child or a woman ran up on them with explosives. And because they, oh, I don't shoot women or children, you know? It's a wonderful, a wonderful ideology if we didn't have to hurt somebody else ever. But that's not the world we live in. It should always be a, violence should always be a last measure, but in defense of yourself and your loved ones, you should never be apologetic for what you have to do in defense thereof. You should never apologize for that. You should never second guess yourself. You should never think that. You should never give it a second consideration. Your first, first mission in life 
as a man, or even as, as the mom, is the defense of yourself and your family, your loved ones. And the law affords you that right in every state in this union. It's 100. So uh, I could end this here. It's uh, 15 minutes of a video. These videos get harder and harder to upload the longer they get. But uh, you notice I got no music playing today. You know, I don't want to get any copyright infringements or what have you, strikes against me. Um, so uh, I'm just call it that. And I'm going to wish you all a good day and a happy and festive uh, Independence Day. And, uh, you know, keep on keeping on. Keep your heads up. Uh, stay safe. Stay free. And uh, stay fit. And young. All right. Odin Meadows.